G'day, I'm Martin Niles, and I'm just coming to you today on my phone camera because I want to turn this around really quickly because last night there was a vote in the Victorian Parliament, as many of you will know by now, and sadly, the Andrews government's change and suppression bill has passed. It will become law. Now, quickly, I want to say what, just recap what this is about for those who haven't been following or who are located around different geographical areas. Really what this bill does, and I've tried to think what in a nutshell is it, and it basically criminalises the truth. It takes those truths about marriage, about gender, about sex, about family, and things like that, things which Christians hold dear, which are part of creation itself, and it says that those ideas, the expression of them, the living out of them, can become criminal acts. Um, so there's not many laws that I can say that about. Um, all that's really needed is for somebody to come along and say that they were harmed by those views. And in the modern world, it's not difficult for them to do that. So that means basically, and there's lots and lots of different effects, but one would be, for example, that people with LGBT feelings or inclinations but who want to live as Christians first, and surprise, there's a lot, although the media don't acknowledge them, but, you know, supporting them, that's potentially a crime, uh, even if they ask. Uh, you know, and of course, you support them when they do ask, that's normal. Um, people who, you know, prayers conversations, standards set in the home by parents, you think of that one, or uh, non-affirming treatment options by counsellors and medical professionals and those sorts of things. Um, and there's a lot of those widespread for very good reasons because people are complicated. There can be all sorts of reasons for the way they feel. All of those things, now potential criminal acts. Or the Equal Opportunity Commission, if we want to get into some of the nitty gritty, can come around and tell you how to think and tell you what to believe and re-educate you, even your church. The effects of the bill are widespread. But let me go back. The principle I want to pull out for a second is that this bill makes the truth criminal. And what I mean by that is that it's a direct attack on the truth of creation. It's a direct attack on the fact that God made male and female in his image. It's an attack on the fact that he said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. It's an attack on the fact that he said, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. It's an attack on the creation ordinance of life itself. This is really important. It's an attack, not just on creation, but therefore it's an attack on the creator. It's an attack on God's people who want to live by standards of righteousness and the design that God has given and the purpose that he's given and not by the legislative brushstrokes of men. Now, I say that actually because there's people out there who think that this is a lower law order issue. It is not a lower order issue. This is not one to ignore. This is not one to walk around. This is vital. It is about the creator. It's about God himself. So what should we do? That's the question. A lot of people want to know. And we need to answer this because I think it's not a question we've answered well in recent times as things have gotten a little teeny weeny bit harder to do the right thing. And, you know, particularly in the schooling environment, particularly in the Christian home, etc., particularly in terms of some of the things we're allowed to say and not to say. People are feeling the pinch, but we haven't answered the question well. What should we do? And the answer in this particular case is extremely simple because the law is so clear. You think of the apostles, and this is one of my favorite stories, where they had their equal opportunity commission moment. They went into the Sanhedrin, it was called, and they were told, you need to stop speaking in certain ways about the truth and about the gospel itself. And they gave us some words to live by then. They said, well, hang on a second. We're under orders from the true king, Jesus. He's told us what to do. And they heard this from the Sanhedrin or the ancient anti-discrimination tribunal, whatever you want to call it. They heard these things and they said, well, no, that goes directly in the face of what Christ would have us to do. And they said these words, we must obey God rather than men. Those are words to live by. In other words, they were saying, we've got to live as though this ruling never happened, as if this doesn't exist, this, this particular requirement, because it, it directly contradicts what God has asked us to do. And that is so important. I want to say something that's going to sound a little bit radical, but it's so true, especially in this case, we must live as though this bill doesn't exist. Now, I don't mean we go out there and do the barbaric things that the bill was apparently designed to stop. And we know that's not what it was about, but of course, we don't do those things. We don't believe in those things. Those sorts of things are not happening in the state of Victoria. That's not what I'm talking about. But what I am talking about is this. Don't modify your behavior in areas like, for example, if somebody comes to you and asks for prayer, you pray for them. If somebody comes to you and asks for assistance, give them the assistance that they're asking for. 
If you're doing a Bible study group or if you're in a position where you're speaking about the Bible and you get to a section about sexual ethics or marriage and these sorts of things, or if you're talking about creation itself and how God made things and set them up for his purposes and design, go through it. Don't stop. Don't avoid it. In fact, preach it, speak about it as if only God were watching. If your child has gender dysphoria or same-sex attraction, treat them with the same love that Christ would have you to treat them with. Support them in the same way and don't compromise and change what you do because of what this bill says. And in that respect, I say, live as if this bill does not exist. Now that requires a lot of courage. And that would be why these apostles, after they said, we must obey God rather than men, and they left, what did they do? They prayed. And the content of their prayer was really important. It said, Lord, grant your servants boldness to continue. They got it. They understood that this would not be easy. We need boldness to continue, to live as though this bill substantially doesn't exist. Also, it requires faith. Faith like Daniel had. And I thought of him in relation to this as I was reflecting on what to say. You know, his prayers were made illegal and the criminalization of prayer is one of the things this bill does. And what did he do? He kept praying. He changed nothing. In fact, to the extent that the place where he preferred to pray happened to be visible from the window. So people who hated him could look in and see him doing it and get him into trouble. And he did it anyway. He changed nothing. That's real faith to continue to do what God would have him to do and change nothing in the face of the laws, the legislative brushstrokes of men rather than the drumbeat of Christ and of God himself. Or faith like Joseph had. And this is another verse that came to me as I thought about this, where Joseph, uh, after years had passed, what did he say? He said, he, said, what, he said, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. And I have no doubt in my mind after the last number of years that Daniel Andrews and key people in his government intend evil. They intend evil against God's people. They intend evil in relation to picking a fight with God effectively and, and, and outlawing parts of his truth directly, as has just happened, which is astonishing. They mean evil. But of course, we're called to live by faith, even in hostile worlds. And Joseph was in such a hostile world. And he did. And God was with him every step of the way. And at the end, he looked back and he said, you know what? God was there. It didn't matter what the plans of men were. It didn't matter how much they tried. God was in it. And what they meant for evil, God even ended up using for good. And you know, if we can but live by faith in that way, even if things get worse, here's the thing. I believe a day will come when we will say the same thing. That actually what was meant for evil, and this is meant for evil, mark my words, God will use ultimately for good when we live by faith. God is still in control, see? And that is so important for us to recognize. And I want to make this point quickly, especially for my generation. It may well be that the comfortable life of ease and success is no longer our calling or is not our calling at all in this one. In fact, it's never been our primary calling. But it may be that serving God costs you a lot more than maybe it costs your parents or your grandparents, although it costs them things, no doubt. But it may be that there's some significant things that must be given up if we're going to live for God first. Uh, you know, cost Joseph a lot, but I bet he wouldn't have had it any other way. Uh, same with Daniel and so forth. And so it's worth bearing that in mind. Times are changing and we must recalibrate and say we must obey God rather than men. We're not going to live by lies, but we're going to live by righteousness. But I want to say this, and I couldn't possibly do this video without finishing just to say, um, yes, that's the lesson I want to give, but I also want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to the thousands, and there was many thousands of you, who rang your politicians, who emailed your politicians, who rallied on the steps of Parliament, who did all of these things. But most exciting for me is the hundreds and hundreds of church leaders who publicly put their name to protests against this, to say, this is not right. I mean, that was truly exciting for me to see. And look, I could whinge that it was late and all the rest of it, but no, actually, in hindsight, I'm grateful because that marks a significant change uh, over the last few years to have so many so active and so enthusiastic. And I want to thank politicians as well. There are certain key ones in the upper house that deserve our thanks. Two Liberal Party MPs who crossed the floor to vote against it. Can you imagine? Only two out of the Liberal Party. What's happening? Um, but this was Bernie Finn, um, and it was Bev MacArthur, two tremendous, uh, uh, two people who took a tremendous stand. The others were all from the cross bench, and they included Jeff Borman, Clifford Hayes, Stuart Grimley, Tanya Maxwell, David Limbrick, Tim Quilty, and Catherine Cumming. 
Thank you on behalf of Victoria's faith communities. You are legends. <laughs> You've done the right thing. Um, but here's the thing I want to make up this point to close. We're here playing a longer game. We are not going to get all the success that we would love to have overnight when things are so bad that both major parties support a bill like this. Things are not going to change in an evening, in a week, in a month. We're here for the long game. And as a one-off campaign, this was an absolute rip-snorter. This was incredible. And more people, perhaps, than many of you realise, noticed. And they really noticed that something was going on here. Something a little unprecedented. And they've got a weather eye on Victoria's faith communities to see whether this will continue. Because if it does continue, and if it grows, as I pray and trust it will, and as ACL will put our absolute full energy into making sure it happens that it grows and gets stronger, things won't stay the same. You've raised your voice for truth, and I say thank you, but I say let's raise it again, and let us not grow weary in doing good, for if we continue, in due time, we will reap reward when we do not give up. Uh, I might slightly butchered the wording of that, but I've got the gist of it bang on from Galatians. Uh, so thank you, everybody. The lesson is live not by lies, live by faith, live by righteousness, live as if the bill doesn't exist. Thank you for acting. Let's continue to be a voice for truth because this movement is not over. Thanks again. God bless.